Today I'm going to be talking about something that is a little bit controversial in the independent film industry. So, full disclosure time. I am a director, but I also work as a crew person, and I have worked in both paid and unpaid gigs throughout the course of my career. I will be discussing things that I know from first-hand experience in this. When it comes to volunteer work in the film industry, there are two camps. There are people who believe that if a film is not offering money for its cast and crew, that either the producers are trying to save all the profits for themselves, or shouldn't be even attempting to make a film unless they can afford to pay a cast and crew. And then there's the other camp, which understands that working a volunteer project can put you in contact with new people that can be beneficial to you in the future. So, while I understand why people who have been in the industry quite some time might avoid volunteer gigs, I don't understand why some people who are new to the industry look down their nose at volunteer gigs. And this is why. If you're new to the industry, and you might have just come out of film school, or you might have just read a few books, or did a few tutorials online, and you think you're ready to jump in and do a bang-up job, you're going to be waiting a long time before you come across a paid gig that will hire you. The reason for this is incredibly simple. You will have very little, if anything, on your resume. Filmmakers, especially the ones that are in very low budgets, are not nearly as desperate as you might think they are when it comes to finding a cast and crew. They know that there are people out there that will work for free who are trying to start up their careers and are looking for the experience. So they're going to pass on anybody that's demanding payment. And if you continue to just hold out for the paid gigs without a resume, you're going to find it very difficult to secure anything other than perhaps a production assistant position. And a lot of the people think that PAs are the lowest of the low and think that those are beneath them. They're wrong, in my opinion, but this is how they feel. Now, if you're smart and you're taking gigs, even as a production assistant, you'll find that to be quite a stepping stone. If you're good at your job and you're impressing people on it, even if it's just hanging up clothes at the end of the day for film production, people are going to notice. And here's a little secret. A lot of crew people that work on these films actually have their own projects in the works. This is how you build up your resume. You might start out as an assistant, and after a, a film or two, people start realizing you're good at it, and they'll give you a lead position in that department. And as soon as they see that you have the talent to build the costumes themselves, suddenly you're costume designer. All this looks really good on a resume. So when you go start looking for the paid gigs, you've got something of note to show them. Now, more experienced filmmakers might take volunteer gigs for a completely different reason, and that is the fact that a lot of us have a bucket list. So if a volunteer gig offers us the opportunity to do something we've always wanted to do, and we have the ability to donate our time, chances are we're going to put in for it because after all, filmmaking is fun, and everybody's got something that they've always wanted to do. But let's get back to our costume designer here. She's got a nice resume built up, and she's starting to attend festivals where films that she worked on are being shown. It's not unheard of for somebody from another production to approach her, noticing that she did a great job with the costumes in one film, and asking her if she would consider working on his project. It's hard to say exactly at what point this happens, but eventually you do start getting paid offers. For me, it happened fairly quickly, but I can tell you one thing. For the first couple years that I was working in the industry, almost all of my paid offers came from the recommendation of people that I had worked with on volunteer gigs. As you keep at it, people start noticing your work more, and you start getting more offers. And this is how you build up your reputation and your prospects when you don't have famous or important friends in the industry who can vouch for you. Now here's a quick tip. When you're starting out, you might have your heart set on one particular crew position or to be an actor, 
but it is to your benefit to learn at least a few more positions. If you can do three or four different positions well, then you have opened yourself up to more projects. While you might end up being the boom operator on a film that doesn't have a lot of special costuming, the point is you'll work more if you have more than one skill to offer. And that's an important fact that people seem to forget. So don't dismiss volunteer gigs, especially when you're starting out, and learn as much as you can on the set. The more you learn, the more valuable you become, and you'll find that this will help you move up the ladder. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of The Unconnected Filmmaker, and if you found this information useful and want to be notified when the next video premieres, just hit that subscribe button. Or, if you have anything you'd like to see an episode on, feel free to comment below. See you next time, and keep those cameras rolling.